Hey, it's just Mover, great. I got us. I got us queued up for the first topic, man. If if you yeah, y'all talk about this this thing because you know what? <laughs> talk amongst it's, yourself. Uh, talk over, amongst like yourself. yourself. What is the first topic? <laughs> the first to look. I'm just gonna. Still. I love right. that video. Okay, now that what you have right there. Hit it. Is Gonky's best pass. Mm. <laughs> All right. So I, you know, having Wombat on, I, I always like to try to talk about something aircraft carrier LSO ish. Because believe it or not, and I think Wombat could attest to this, e even though I was a carrier pilot, I read CV and tops like once, maybe. But yeah, as more time you know. I did. Well, as like a lieutenant, I'm pretty much on the night page, right? So I pretty much concentrate on that stuff. So <clears throat> we mentioned it a little bit the last time you were on, man, about it's weird, but in the Navy around the ship, we don't take our own wave off as a as a pilot. And that can be um, that can be very tough uh, on a person who's experiencing all kinds of crazy uh, spatial D basically coming aboard the sure. boat. And that's why they do it, because perception a lot of times doesn't jive with reality whereas the lso has the non-biased opinion of what's actually happening with your with your airplane we mentioned a little bit hey there's you know there's a there's actually a point where you can't or you shouldn't wave somebody off and fact. that's a fact would you agree that's probably what happened in this video they tried to wave this rhino off and uh, a little bit inside the wave off window because that's what can happen so right. what I think honestly happened, because I remember this situation, um, amongst the angels in white LSOs out there that spoke after this incident, I think um, what happened is they actually waved him off fine and he, oh, he rotated the with the nose. Yeah. So, I mean, so again, it, and it's that was, I believe, what the causal factor is that happened. Now the plane survived and the pilots are fine. It's hard to tell in the video. Uh, I've watched, like I have a, a version of it on my phone that you could see it a little bit better. But no kidding, he does kind of squat the jet. And you know, that's the number one thing in naval aviation. If you're going to go around, it's all power, period. You hold your angle of attack. Even if it's not the best angle of attack, it's the angle of attack you got, hold it. Right. Because when I waved you off, I knew what your angle of attack was. What I don't need now, you to do is try to fly away, <laughs> drop that hook down, and get an in flight, which is what this was. Now, do you know, was this Rhino pilot flying an auto or manual? Uh, I don't recall, to be honest with you. I, I want to say uh, it was a, I want to say it was an auto pass with a bad technique on the go around for autos. Yeah. Now, yeah, as a Hornet guy, it was a little different because <laughs> like you'll oh, do this. It's freaking <laughs> awesome. Um, I wonder oh, at which point the 904 happened. Was it the first hit or the second hit? But what, um, well, the so like in, I'm sorry, go ahead, dude. So for the Charlie, the Charlie's autos, I think, were more um responsive. I think, yeah. So, hey, for back. our viewers who don't know, real quick, so uh, I flew manual all the time because I didn't really trust. Al, are we really going to get into an auto throttles discussion tonight? Because that could take this thing a whole different uh, route. I'm just I'm giving them the twenty thousand foot version. Gotcha. So a manual gotcha. pass is like the me operating the throttles the whole time. An auto pass is when auto throttles is engaged, and when and correct me if I'm wrong, instead of a power call, you give an an attitude call, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. which, if you know the guy's autos, which you should if your right. paddles worth your damn. Right, because the so plane looks it, different. So, yeah. So if you're flying an auto pass and st if, if, if you need to add power to the, to the airplane or energy, of the airplane, you don't move the throttles because you have auto engage. Instead, you pump the stick back a little bit, pump it back a little bit. Yeah. You just pump it back and the nose pitches up just slightly. And that's the cue for the, the engines will spool up because the, the airplane thinks you're, you know, you're commanding a nose up climb. So well now and, and relate that because you were a manual ball flyer, but now yeah. you fly the mighty Airbus. <laughs> you know, it's that, auto thrust. Well, hold on. Well, tr <laughs> true, but you know, and I tell people this all the time when I teach them: if you get good at the auto thrust engage, you can actually manipulate the yeah. thrust with your flying yeah. hand. It just yeah. takes more finesse 
Whereas yeah. when you manually fly it, like when you flew the the Charlie and the Super manually, you could you could give gobs. You couldn't yeah. do that with the autos. You had to be you had to be a little bit smoother. Right. Um, but the point so I, I want- think that happened here is I believe he was in autos and he he kind of did a combination, which really and and now I will say, pretty proud of this. I've never boltered in a Charlie ever at the ship. Um, and I have gotten waved off a time or two just cause everybody does, but it does. If you're flying autos, like it is a very deliberate, like, okay, I'm done with this hand. Like it's yeah. locked in and I'm firewall in this hand and you just kind of hold what you got. And I think it was a combination of both, but the hook yeah. definitely came down, which is what caused it. And, and again, it's a game of inches. I mean, there's times where I've waved people off and I know they're going to clear the wires by less than a foot, but. Yeah, and different it's airplanes have a, <clears throat> different airplanes have a different wave off window. And I guess how, when you're going through getting your quals as an LSO, is that just an eyeball cow thing that you guys learn? Yeah. So I mean, it, it, they they do they do and they don't. So in reality, there's a ten foot wave off window and a hundred foot wave off window. Okay, hundred foot wave off window is there's men or equipment or women in the landing area. So mm-hmm. we want the Bell deck aircraft to go at least 100 feet over the flight deck 10 foot wave off window is there's nothing in the landing area but maybe the gear is not set or the lens isn't i mean not likely that the lens wouldn't be set but like something else is going on we're not ready to catch you so we could take you to a 10 foot wave off window now are we out there with a ruler hell no it's all i mean as you know naval aviation is very much in its rawest form it is 100 yeah. percent just eyeball right i mean so you know you're really you're as an LSO and this is the part of it um, that I think is, you know, people that haven't done the job don't have an appreciation for is there's so many variables. Like what yep. did you just do with your jet? Right. So if I know as an LSO, I got to get you in a hundred foot wave off window. Right. Cause there's people out there working, but you just did a huge power off. Well, crap, dude, I gotta get rid of you now, even though you're nowhere near a hundred foot wave off window. Cause it's going to take yep. time for the jet to spool back up. Well, what if that exact same scenario happens to a Hawkeye? I don't have to worry about it as much because they got instantaneous power, yep. right? So, and these are the things that that you're truly looking at. And a good LSO, at least I was told, and never actually became one, <laughs> but a good LSO is it, it, while we're we're looking at the attitude of the jet for the aircraft, you're also kind of scanning where that hook is. And in theory, yeah. that hook is going through the same piece of sky for the yep. whole recovery. Because the attitude regardless is of what set. the aircraft is, because the because yeah, because yeah, the it's you're looking for a certain hook to ramp. That's what I'm yep. trying to get is a distance from the, the hook going across the ramp. But it doesn't matter if you're in a rhino, a prowler who is way up, a hawkeye, which is relatively flat, a charlie, didn't matter. Yep. That hook still should travel through the exact same sky. So yeah. No, that's so awesome, what? man. I uh mover, can you play it one more time? Just because it's so or painful Doug. to watch. I want to ask Doug on, for that. Story. That's that's Doug. Doug is is all the movers trying. Movers like doing I'm an old to FaceTime exist. video where he's trying. And I mean, I, I hate to be the Monday morning quarterback, yeah. but he squatted the jet. You now, can see it do it right at the beginning of the video. Right now, I want to ask you now, a Charlie would that thing have exploded? <laughs> on, I don't on the second touchdown. <laughs> You know, I just don't know if a Charlie would do that the same way because it's shorter. And I mean, a Charlie, Charlie is a be- just as beefy. It's not as heavy. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, dude, that, I, don't, I don't know. I've, I don't know. I've, I mean, uh, I've never 904 to Charlie. I have 903. Dude. That is so painful. Look at that thing to watch. No but dude, here's what I'll tell you. And I'm sure that, um, I, I'm, I'm sure that there's some, some really smart YouTube searchers out there that could find these but there's black cam video of me landing a hawkeye on the nose gear first because yeah so you could do that in the s3 as well but um man yeah, the uh um, the rhino was was definitely a much more robust uh was it okay it, then, yeah. It, <laughs> then yeah i mean it probably would have it probably would have hurt um and for the people who don't know what 903 904 all it is is a code that's yeah, all it is it's landing. just a like Think about it from a, a ones and zero standpoint. It's it's just it's that hard. it's a hard landing or a really hard landing, and yeah. you know if any any pilot any Hornet pilot worth their salt that 
knew it was checking the codes before they were oh, taxiing dude. out of the landing area. Dude, every doing. time I was like 903, <laughs> like, cause a 903 didn't mean anything no. to maintenance. Maintenance would just look at it and be like, it's still a Hornet. You're good. 904. Yeah. That girl's going down the hangar. She's going to, yeah. I mean, the amount of work that had to be, I felt and I, oh, like, for I, sure. I feel like in my career, I have gotten 903s, point nines. Where I'm for like, there's sure. no way that's not a 904, but it wasn't. For so. sure, this guy popped the 904. Oh, yeah. yeah that's and you know what would be the dude we'd always used to joke, it's like, <clears throat> um, if you're gonna if you're gonna an eight eight eleven in the break, you might as well 904 it on the trap. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Which eight eleven is like overstress in G. Yeah. So which, if you're gonna overstress the jet, you might as well get the most <laughs> well 904 that bad boy. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, it's going to the hangar. It's going deck. in the hangar. Yeah, it's going in the hangar deck anyways. But so, but yeah, that we, hey, I mean, that's a rough that's yeah. a rough landing. I mean, and and again, it it's it's so easy. That was years ago too. I mean, I the video says what yeah. date it was, but that was a while ago. Uh, you know, I hate to be the guy that's like, "Oh, man, that guy." Cuz we could all be there. But I love that. You have 904. I have 9. That I have is a 909. <laughs> The um, the sea state doesn't look very bad. The conditions yeah. don't look very bad. Like that's yeah. just. But hey, you know what? That's the beauty of naval aviation. I was thinking about this today. Is like that's what I loved about being a navy carrier pilot. Is like crap like you that happens. <laughs> it, it, but like it happens. But then you move on. And I think that's yeah, what makes carrier pilots a different breed because it's just like yeah i mean dude I, like i have landed a hawkeye on the nose gear so many times i learned what it felt like in the plane like i mean i was to the point where because it would jam my knee into the nose wheel steering handle and it got to the point towards the end of my career that i'm like damn it i just did it again and the copilot that's ironworks like, what? that's like, ironworks baby i'm like watch the video downstairs and you'd see pitching deck or whatever it is coming yeah. in and i push the nose over and just bam right in the nose gear but oh yeah i mean those planes it, should all be on sticks now because can't, can't do that but, no more it no no well i mean you can it's just the taxi is a lot slower because yeah. your gears collapsed